All right, everyone. So CMHC report is finally in. So who is CMHC? We will talk about that in this particular video. We will also share the analysis and the prediction of the economy of 2024 and the years beyond. So stick around and let's talk about it. All right, so let's get into the video. So who is CMHC and what is the role in Canada? So I will share my screen and I will talk about the analysis. Most importantly, everyone has been asking the same question. What is happening in 2024 and beyond? So 2025 and 2026. So this is a chance to see what they have to say when it comes to the economy in these particular years. So let's get right into it. All right, so the term Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, refers to a Canadian Crown Corporation that serves as the National Housing Agency of Canada. The goal of the agency is to make mortgage loans affordable for all Canadians through a housing development strategy and mortgage insurance, among other initiatives. So basically, if you ever uh, had a mortgage, so if you ever applied for a mortgage, so basically if you put more than 20% down on a property, you will not need CMHC. But if your down payment is lower, for some of you, you have the experience, so you will need to have this additional insurance. But also, they are, I'm not going to say controlling, but they're analyzing what is going on in, in Canada's market and all of that stuff. So it is interesting to see what they have to say in this particular analysis. So uh, let's get right into it. So here, as you can see, the screen, uh, this is on the national Canadian level. And these are the highlights. So the first check here is economic growth outlook expecting weak economic growth in 2024 and yes we can definitely feel it yeah 2023 was hard but it continued in 2024 despite all these stories in 2023 as they have mentioned look as soon as we see these interest rates feather in 2024 the lights will go on and the boom is gonna be here again when it comes to real estate. I do have a story towards the end of the video because when I'm looking at this particular analysis, uh, they're kind of for the regular, I would say consumer, you know, someone that's actually stable or they're just looking at the data, you know, just normally they have no deficiencies or any escalations or any deficits or any death when it when it comes to their visa cards and all of that stuff and that's what has been going on because the debt when it comes to actual uh, consumers and mortgages and riding this particular wave of high interest rates and variable rates it accumulated so much that we're basically exploding but let's get back into the actual analysis so housing starts uh, starts prediction expecting lower housing starts in 2024 there is a slight improvement forecast over the next two years supply challenges notable the lagged effect of higher interest rates means that the new construction in 2025 2026 won't reach 2021 or uh, to 2023 levels right so yes these are the analysis but also we have to take into consideration that you know about 40,000 units will uh will be completed within the next two years and then all the other mortgage renewals that will happen within the next two years that are over four million mortgages that will renew from the low ones and twos all the way up to i don't know fours and fives right so that's extremely stressful as i mentioned i have i have a case study example towards the end of the video that might not apply to to whatever we are saying here in the analysis because it is uh very unique to each individual 
but let's get back into the actual highlights here. So the MLS sales rebound, forcing an increase in MLS sales due to strong population growth. Sales are expected to surpass the 10 year average levels, but remain below the record levels of 2020 and 2021. This is reflecting of decreased housing affordability. Yes, we basically hit, I'm not gonna say a ceiling, what we hit the plateau of affordability and that is the issue because people cannot only look at one particular item when it comes to a mortgage right and and when we're talking about mortgages delinquencies in mortgages are jumping they're skyrocketing and we all know one thing well at least what we know is the past right in the past um the mortgages are the last to go which is normal right like people will hold off um paying their you know visa debt or or car loan or something that they might not think it is as important as their home or roof uh above their head right so but now we have seen that these delinquencies you know late payments and all of that stuff are taking effect faster than most expect right so these times are not as a uh, cookie cutter thing right like so even these analysis um are not that straightforward like if you have ever purchased a vehicle let me give you an example of a vehicle and it says look this particular vehicle st on the sticker when you're actually purchasing that that you know pickup truck it says you know the average you know per 100 kilometer consumption of gas so it's like 11 5 11 7 right whoever i spoke to their truck consumes 15 18 20 liters per 100 kilometers why because there are different conditions. People are hauling tools around, maybe more workers, going uphill, downhill, muddy mountains. They're driving that actual vehicle, right? So it's real life scenarios versus them testing that particular vehicle in a perfect environment, right? Perfect slate environment no ups no downs easy on the gas and all of that stuff right so no idling and whatnot right so so this is the same situation here some people will benefit from this particular situation because they could anticipate maybe the future maybe they were too scared to over leverage themselves over these years and exposing themselves to so much death and they said, look, we're going to hold on and let's see uh, what they will have in the books for years to come. And maybe some of these people were uh, right, I would say, right? Because they're holding onto the cash, they're waiting for that moment, right? So, but some of the people, they just went head first, let's go, you know, the wheels are turning, this nonsense is never going to stop. Right. Like I remember speaking to some people in 2021 and and, and the early 2022 uh, and they said, like, look, like we are extremely scared because we will never, ever going to be able to afford a house. And then they bought three homes that year. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, OK, so like I, I get I get you, but now you go overboard because the funds were easily acquired you walk into a bank and if you had a wish they will fulfill it they will give it to you right so but anyways let's go back to the actual analysis here so okay so let's go back into the rental here so rental housing demand despite more renter uh completions growing demand for rental homes will not meet because of the cost of ownership will lead households to stay in rental housing rents will rise and vacancies rates will fall yes in in a way it's correct but also we have to take another um another segment into consideration over the past few years we had over millions and millions of newcomers to canada right some of these newcomers are leaving canada uh the population is not growing as fast and all of that stuff and these units are coming to completion 
right? So over 40,000, as I mentioned, in, in the next few years uh, will meet their new owners. I don't know how they're going to qualify for these because some of those funds were actually taken from their homes, uh, their existing homes, because the equity rose. And I'll talk about that in, in, in my case study here. But furthermore here, uh, what is interesting here, and uh, this is exactly what I want to read to you about, we expect a gradual rebound after a week 2024. We anticipate weak growth in gross domestic product in 2024 with economic momentum gradually increasing throughout 25 and 26. So there you go. So look, 2025 and 2026 is a write-off. But now let's get into the case study. So I had someone call me two days ago and they said, look, like uh, they have a house and that house was paid off. I said, well, congratulations, good for you. But they said, no, 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 it, it doesn't stop there. So I said, okay, so what, what is the problem? I said, well, look, uh, I paid off my house years ago. I said, fine. So their house was at the peak worth at $1.5 million. I said, well, congratulations, right? So in that time, in that peak, what they did, they bought three condos. So on each condo, they put $100,000 on each condo as a down payment. So these condos are in downtown Toronto. So that means out of this house, they took a $300,000 line of credit. I said, okay, so what's the problem? Well, they said, look, now these condos are about to be completed right in 2025 early 2025 i said okay and what is the problem so the problem is that for all of these one two and three condos they have to qualify for a mortgage and they said we cannot qualify for the mortgage i said oh okay so what is your plan so then they said look so my plan is to sell my house i said okay great congratulations so when I made the actual analysis on that particular home, their house, best case scenario, because it's not in Toronto, it's outside the Toronto core, best case scenario, it's at $1.2 million. And then they told me, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like you are 30%, sorry. So you are 300,000 dollars off your expected analysis or the price that you really want it right so now this particular person is stuck but it continues check this out so on these condos each condo each condo is about a hundred thousand dollars a lot of hundreds eh? hundred thousand dollars soft on the appraisal all right so let's do the math now so the appraisal okay so they took this down payment for these condos check three hundred thousand dollars on three condos check three hundred thousand dollars for the appraisals because they have to top up that particular difference in order to close all right their home he expected it to be 1.5 million dollars but it's technically $1.2 million minus all the costs and realtor fees and all the other fees and whatnot. So let's say comfortably he's three to $400,000 minus. So if you add three, six, nine, so 900 to a million dollars, he's down. So that's basically what this man is looking so now when i'm looking at this analysis okay and yes as per claim that the 2025 and 2026 might see those hiccups and we will maybe not rebound as fast and we will not rebound as fast as people might claim because the price is you know shooting up what we saw throughout you know 2021 
I don't think that we will see that ever because those th that was the perfect case scenario. That's a movie scenario. It was amazing. Low this, high the demand, all of that stuff, low interest rates, money coming from everywhere. Let's go, let's go. That is a scenario that probably will not happen in a long time. And guess what? This gentleman was basing it off of the best scenario in their life. So imagine from someone that had a paid off home value of 1.5 a few years ago and 1.2 today went down to a, a negative 900 to a million dollars. Right? So isn't that crazy? That is insane. And then people ask me, how do people lose money? It's impossible to lose money. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is very likely and losing money can happen very fast. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you understood what I was trying to say when it comes to CMHC analysis breakdown with this in this particular example. So if you like this kind of content, and you would like to find out more, please click on these other videos and I'll see you in the next one.